hi students in this lecture we are going to discuss simple harmonic motion first have a look the concepts which we are going to discuss in this chapter so first we are discussing definition of shm then kinematics of shm dynamics of shm next calculation of time period so in this we are taking spring block system simple pendulum physical pendulum and torsional pendulum and here coming to c and d these two come under angular simple harmonic motion right and next it is superposition of two shms in this we are having two types so one is lines of oscillations or same second one lines of oscillations are perpendicular they are known as lissajous figures and finally we discuss a forced and damped oscillations so these are the concepts we are going to cover first have a look regarding the definition of sho right definition is now like this if acceleration of a particle is a proportional to negative of the displacement from its mean position then motion is said to be simple harmonic so in this one word we have to focus carefully mean position what is the meaning of that because we know acceleration and we know what is a displacement so let us understand mean position right okay here mean position means it is stable equilibrium position students earlier we have learned in work energy power three types of equilibrium stable equilibrium unstable equilibrium and neutral equilibrium so when it comes to stable equilibrium net force is zero and potential energy is minimum so in this mean position refers to stable equilibrium position where net force is zero potential energy is minimum right now see one second what is given acceleration of a particle is a proportional to negative of the displacement from its mean position then motion is said to be simple harmonic i will try to explain in detail this one let us take here right let us take a straight line let us call this point as a which refers to mean position <laughs> refers to mean position let us call this is a point b and this is a point c so here particles motion is confined to bc that means it oscillates between b and c you can see here this is oscillatory motion or this is also known as a to and fro motion it is oscillatory motion or it is also known as a to and fro motion so a simple harmonic motion is a to and fro motion and also periodic motion that means this motion repeats at equal regular time intervals that means the time taken from b to c again c to b they will be equal so here from a to b then from b to a and from a to c and from c to a this is what we call one oscillation that means a to b that is now towards the right extreme b to a right extreme to mean position next a to c towards left extreme and c to a this is one oscillation so time taken for this one oscillation that is called time period 
which is given by which is given by time period is equal to it is 2 pi by omega where omega is known as angular frequency now let us come to here that mathematics we are saying acceleration proportional to right here you can see d square y by dt square is equal to minus omega square y here y is now displacement displacement from mean position so double derivative of displacement gives acceleration acceleration equal to some constant omega square is a constant so acceleration proportional to negative of the displacement that is a statement given here right so y is a displacement from mean position omega is a constant known as angular frequency so simple harmonic motion it is a to and fro motion it is a periodic motion and for equation one solution is so this we are taking directly from mathematics without doing any other calculations the solution for equation one is y equal to a sin omega t plus five let us now understand the words in this one like what is y what is a what is omega t plus five coming to here y y is a displacement from mean position that is known and if you observe in equation two if a sine value becomes one that means maximum y value becomes maximum and that maximum value is a that means A is maximum displacement from mean position. I am repeating students. When sine value becomes 1, y equal to A. And we know y means displacement from mean position. When sine value is 1, displacement is max. Therefore, A is maximum displacement from mean position. Right. Now coming to omega t plus 5. This omega t plus 5 is known as a phase, phase which gives location of the particle and its direction of motion. And I will explain this, what is the meaning of giving location and direction of motion. And before that, let us have what is a phi. Phi, phi is initial phase. Means when t equal to 0, phase becomes a fine. It is a simple one. Or it is also known as hippo. Right? Okay. Now let us understand how phase gives location of the particle and direction of motion. For example, let us say at one instant, at one instant, the y coordinate of the particle is a by 2. And if you observe y value a by 2, it's meaning. So we can have different values for omega t plus 5. We have y equal to a by 2. We can have different values for omega t plus 5. And out of those many values, I am taking only two values. Let us take one is one is one is 30 degree other one is 150 degrees actually this phase must be in radian that is a pi by 6 radian and next one is a 5 pi by 6 radian and we can see 30 and 150 for both these angles or for both these phase values y value a by 2 so a by 2 y value positive y value positive means it is now to the right of point A. It is in between midpoint of AB. You can see here midpoint of AB. It is right of AB. So right of A. So here I am taking right as a positive, right of A as a positive and left of A as negative. So with that sign convention, y equal to A by 2, its meaning is it is a right of A in between A and B. So for 30 and 150, 
for both y value a by 2. But what makes difference is when it comes to velocity, when it comes to velocity, if you differential displacement, we get here, I will show here. Here you can see y equal velocity equal to <laughs> velocity equal to a omega cos omega t plus 5. It is a cos function. Cos function is positive when you take 30. But when you take 150, cos is negative. So what it means, see carefully here. When we are taking 30, cos 30, it is a post. That means it is moving towards B. It is moving towards B. That means its velocity is now towards, towards right extreme. Its velocity is towards, its velocity is towards the right extreme. I am showing here. It is towards right extreme. If you are taking 150, cos value becomes negative. That means it is now towards C. So direction of velocity is reversed. So for same position, y equal to a by 2, but one direction towards right extreme and one is towards mean position. That means if you know phase, we can get location of the particle as well as its direction of motion. So I hope you got this point. So phase gives location of the particle and its direction of motion. Right? Let us now calculate velocity. <clears throat> So differentiating displacement gives us velocity. So V equal to A omega cos omega t plus 5. And see here how we got this one. So here I am taking in the place of in the place of cos omega t I am taking cos Omega t plus 5 is taken as a square root of 1 minus sine square omega t. And in the place of a sine square omega t, I am writing here y square by a square. That you can see in equation, yes, equation 2. In equation 2, sine of omega t plus 5 equal to y by a. That is what I have taken here. And substitute this value now here in the place of cos omega t, then we are going to get omega into square root of a square minus y square. This is now expression for speed as a function of a displacement. So from this we can say, so from this we can say if y is zero, speed is maximum. See what do you mean by y zero? So y is zero means particle is at mean position. So at mean position, speed is maximum. And if you take y value a, so y value a, y equal to a means it is extreme position. You can take y value plus a or minus a because it is now y square, which is a positive value. That means when you take y equal to plus or minus a, Speed is zero, means speed is maximum at mean position, that is y equal to zero, and zero at extreme positions, that is y equal to plus or minus c. Now differentiate that equation three, that means differentiate velocity, it gives acceleration, that is a equal to minus omega square y. And from this equation, we can say that acceleration is a zero at a mean position because y is zero. And its modulus is maximum. I'm using the word modulus because acceleration is a vector quantity. So modulus is a maximum at extreme positions. That is y equal to plus r minus c. And if you observe equation five, if displacement is a positive, 
So displacement pause to means it is right of the mean position because we have taken right of the mean position as a pause to. So when displacement is a pause to, acceleration is negative. That means direction of acceleration is towards mean position. If y is negative, means particle is left of the mean position, then acceleration will be in post. It is a post to means it is a towards right side, again towards mean position. So from this, we can conclude that whatever may be the position of the particle, acceleration is always towards mean position. This is what we can conclude from that. Okay. And the same points I am saying once again here, mean position is stable equilibrium position where potential energy is minimum and it need not be zero. So majority of the students having a confusion here that minimum potential energy means zero. No, it need not be zero. And we solve problems based on this also. And the speed is maximum. That means kinetic energy is maximum. Speed maximum means acceleration is zero because here motion is one dimensional. That's why speed maximum means acceleration is zero. And that's why net force is a zero. Right. And coming to extreme positions. Extreme positions are those where speed is a zero or direction of velocity changes or modulus of acceleration is max. And coming to here, distance between extreme position and mean position is modulus of maximum displacement. I am repeating here why I am using the word modulus. The reason is that it is a distance. That's why I am using the word here modulus of maximum displacement. Okay, students. In next lecture, we are going to discuss some more concepts based on this.